as an application of linear second order ODEs with constant coefficients, we want to study mass spring systems. So here's a situation. We're going to have a spring. I'm going to attach a mass to its end. Here, we're going to let that hang till it gets to its equilibrium position. We'll call that height zero. Okay, we're going to denote height by the variable x. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our mass, raise it up to position one, and release. We want to study what happens after that. So we're going to have a few cases to look at. For this video, we're going to look at the case where our motion is free and undamped. So free is going to mean no outside interference. So once we raise up to position one and release, everything else is going to be determined by the spring and the mass. Then undamped says we're looking at an ideal spring. So that means there's going to be no effects from friction, no effects from air resistance. Okay, so with that in mind, we're going to have this initial value problem. So we're going to have x as a function of t. We're going to have at time t equals 0. The height's going to be equal to 1. So that's just us raising up to position 1. Then we'll also have x prime of 0 equals 0. So here we have a physical system. Okay, we're talking about motion. So the derivative is going to be velocity. When we're at time t equals zero, we're up at position one. Our mass is not moving. So as soon as we release, that mass is gonna be in free fall and the spring is gonna start acting on it. Now, for our ODE, what we're gonna have is, okay, second derivative of x plus, in this case, we'll have four times x equals zero. Now, in general, for the free undamped case for a spring, we would have x double prime plus beta times x equals zero, where beta is equal to our spring constant over the mass. And that's always going to be a positive number. Okay, for concreteness sake here, we're going to let it be equal to four. Now, for ODE, this is going to come from two equations. Okay, first we're going to have Hooke's Law. So what Hooke's Law says, okay, if I have a spring, I start to stretch it out. Okay, the force that the spring exerts is going to be proportional to how far you pull away. So the further I pull it away, the harder the spring pulls back. And note, it's always going to pull back in the opposite direction, so it picks up a minus sign. Then we're going to have this constant k, which we just call the spring constant. Then we have Newton's second law of motion. That just says, if I have a force, that's equal to the mass times the acceleration. So when we put these two equations together, what we're going to have is, okay, note acceleration is just the second derivative of our x. So of m times x double prime equals minus k times x. Divide both sides by m, push everything to one side, and then we get our ODE. Now, we have a few methods to find a solution to the initial value problem. So we want to focus on qualitative properties of the solution. Now, what we're going to do is find our specific solution, take a look at its trajectory in the phase plane, and then we'll take a look at how all the trajectories hang together. Okay, so for our specific solution, okay, we have our ODE, so we're going to go find its characteristic polynomial. It's going to be r squared plus 4, if r is going to be our variable. So our roots are going to be plus or minus 2i. So there's no real roots. That means my solutions are going to be the form x of t equals a cosine of 2t plus b sine of 2t. Take its derivative. Then we're going to put in 0 into x. We expect to get 1 out. And then in x prime, we're going to put in 0. We expect to get a 0 out. So what will happen? We're going to have that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 0. Then that's going to give me my specific solution xt is equal to cosine of 2t, x prime of t is going to be equal to minus 2 sine of 2t. Then if I divide x prime by 2, you'll note that x squared plus x prime over 2 squared is equal to 1. And note, t doesn't show up in this equation at all. Now, let's take a look at the graph of x. So, first thing to note, the graph of x is going to be periodic with period pi. 
So for our mass spring system, when we're free and undamped, the motion is gonna go on forever, okay? Our mass is gonna keep going between minus one and one, and it's never gonna stop. Another thing to note, if we take, okay, our ODE, we have second derivative of x equals minus four x. So that means the second derivative always has a sign different from x. Now note what's happening here. If x is the height, x double prime is gonna be our concavity. So that means if our height is positive, we're gonna be concave down. If our height is negative, we're gonna be concave up. So this is just saying what we already know. This says, okay, if our height's positive, okay, we're above the equilibrium position, then the force is gonna pull us down. Okay, and here force is equal to acceleration. If we're below the equilibrium point, then the force is gonna pull us up. So the idea is the spring is always trying to get back to position zero, but it's always gonna overshoot. And that's why this thing is gonna be able to go on forever. Okay, one last thing we should do. Let's just check what's happening with a few points. So if my time t equals zero, we already know what's happening. We're gonna have x is equal to one, x prime is gonna be equal to zero, and then second derivative of x, we know is just gonna be equal to minus four times the original x, so it's gonna be minus four. So what does that say? We're at position one, okay, we're not moving, and the force or our acceleration is pulling us down. If I take a look at time equal to pi over four, okay, what's happening there? So you put that through your equations, you're gonna have your position zero, so you're at the equilibrium position. There, we're gonna have velocity is equal to minus two, so we're moving down. And then we're gonna have, okay, our second derivative is equal to zero, so it's gonna be equal to either our acceleration or our force. That just means we're at the equilibrium position. So when we're at that point there, the spring is not gonna exert any force at all. Okay, but because it's moving, okay, our motion is gonna be able to continue. Now, if we take t equal to pi over two, put it into our equations, what comes out? We'll have minus one, zero, four. So position, we're at minus one down here. So we're at the bottom. Okay, at that point, we're stopped. Okay, our mass is getting ready to turn around. It was moving down. Now it's gonna start moving up, so it has to stop there. And then the force is gonna be given by four. So that means that's moving in the upward direction. So that's just a few points to put together our position, velocity, and acceleration. Let's take our solution, plot as a trajectory in the phase plane. So the idea is we're set x1 equal to x, x2 equal to x prime. We're gonna take our solution and its derivative, and then we're gonna plot it as a curve in the x1, x2 plane. We'll call that the trajectory for the solution. Now here, Okay, we have a physical system, x1 is gonna be our height, x2 is gonna be our velocity. So we're trying to see how our position and our velocity work together with our solution. Now, in our special case, we had x squared plus x prime over two squared was equal to one. So we just move that over to the new variables. We're gonna have this equation. So our trajectory is gonna be an ellipse. Now, Take a look at a few more properties of our ODE using the idea of the phase plane. One thing to note, our ODE was autonomous. So that means, okay, we have the variable T, but if you note, T never shows up explicitly in the ODE. So that means there's gonna be properties of our solutions that don't actually depend on T. Okay, so one of those is gonna be the slope field. Now, if we try to get the slope field for our ODE, Okay, let's take a look at what's gonna happen. So what we'll do is, okay, I'll have dx1 dt. Okay, so that's just taking derivative here. It's gonna give me x prime, but that's equal to x2. I'll have dx2 over dt. That's gonna be equal to x double prime. That's equal to minus 4x by our ODE. And that's also equal to minus 4x1, getting everything in terms of x1 and x2. Then, by definition or by doing implicit differentiation, we'll have d of x2 over d of x1 is equal to, okay, d of x2 dt over d of x1 dt equals minus four x1 x2. So what is this? 
This is just gonna be the slope of the tangent line to a trajectory at the point x1, x2. Now, like I said, you get this by implicit differentiation. If you note here, if I take this equation, take the derivative treating x2 as a function of x1, you're gonna get the same answer here. Okay, now let's take a few points. So if I take t equals zero for our specific solution, we're gonna get the point in the phase plane one, zero. So x is equal to one, x prime is equal to zero. Then if I go to our equation for the slope of the tangent line, that's gonna be equal to, okay, we're gonna have minus four over zero. So it's gonna be undefined, which means I have a vertical line. So here, we're to put in this little arrow here indicating the slope. Note it's gonna point down because we'll see when we plot a few more points, our curve is gonna be moving in this direction. If I go to t equal to pi over eight, okay, you work that out by putting it into our original equations. We get for x1 and x2, square root of two over two, minus square root of two. So we see that our next point's gonna land right here. So you're going from zero to pi over eight in time. So we're going in this direction. Then you'll note, if we work out the slope, okay, that's gonna be equal to two. So, okay, a line with slope two is pointed like this. So then we're gonna put in our arrow here like that. Okay, and then we make sure we point in the direction that the curve is moving. Then we'll take t equal to pi over four. That's gonna give me Okay, pi over four, cosine of two times pi over four, it's gonna be zero. And then we'll have, if I put that into our minus two, okay, it's gonna be sine of pi halves, it's gonna give me a minus two. So that point's gonna be at the very bottom here. If I work out slope of the tangent line, we're gonna wind up getting a minus four, zero over minus two, which gives me a zero. So this is gonna be a horizontal tangent line there. Okay, so we see the slope field at least at these three points that I've checked, is matching up perfectly with our trajectory, as we would expect. Let's take a look at the big picture. I want to find a trajectory for a solution to our ODE with any initial conditions. So, the way we'll do that is by using the autonomous property. That's going to mean if we take a solution to our ODE, we shift forwards or backwards in time, we get another solution to the ODE. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna focus on one type of initial conditions. We'll see that those trajectories that correspond to the initial conditions are gonna cover the entire phase plane. So that'll mean I can get to any initial conditions just by shifting in time from one of those solutions. Now, what I'm interested in is just gonna be taking our original scenario. Instead of raising to height one, we're gonna raise to height A. So A can be positive, negative, or zero. Okay, and then the idea is gonna be, we just raise it to that height. So T equals zero, we're gonna have X zero equal to our A. Then we're just gonna release, and then the spring's gonna take over. So we'll also have the X prime of zero is gonna be equal to zero. Now, we work out the solutions here. Okay, they're gonna be in two types. So. First, if we just let a be equal to zero, then we have x and x prime are also zero. In that case, we're not doing anything to the spring, we're just leaving it in its equilibrium position. So it stays at height equal to zero for all time, and its velocity is equal to zero for all time also. If our a is non-zero, then we're just gonna get motion like we had before. So the spring is just gonna pull the mass up, back and forth between a and minus a. Now, the solutions in that case are gonna look like, okay, our x is gonna be a cosine 2t, x prime is gonna be equal to minus 2a sine of 2t. Then, we could take these solutions, we could force them into the equation of an ellipse. So, trajectories for those solutions are gonna look like these ellipses, okay, and they'll be twice as high as they are wide. All right. So you note, these are gonna cover the entire plane except for the origin. Okay, for the origin, okay, that's when we had a equals zero. Note, that point's gonna be a critical point. At that point, we're gonna have, okay, the derivative of x and the derivative of x prime, so derivative of x1, derivative of x2, are both gonna be equal to zero. The type of critical point that we get, if you note, 
None of our trajectories are gonna be moving into or out of our critical point, so it's gonna be a center. So there's no attraction, no repulsion, okay? Our trajectories just circle around it. As a final note, let's tie our slope field to our trajectories. So to get our slope field, we're just gonna call x1 equal to x, x2 equal to x prime. You work out derivative of x1 and x2 with respect to t. Put them back into x1 and x2 terms. Then we're gonna divide. So we'll get dx2 over dx1 is equal to minus 4x1 over x2. Okay, the interpretation is, this is gonna be the slope of the tangent line to your trajectory through the point x1, x2. Now, to check that, you could take equation of your ellipse, differentiate this implicitly, treating x2 as a function of x1, you're gonna get the same answer that we get here. Then what's happening qualitatively? If we're in quadrant one or three, okay, the slope of our tangent lines is gonna be negative, so they're gonna be going like this. If we're in quadrant two or four, slopes are gonna be positive, so they'll go like this. And then the idea would be, is if we had a good picture of each arrow at each point, if you were to squint, you would be able to pick out your trajectories.